Good morning. Well, it's Wednesday morning here in River Hills, and it's a hot one, real humid out there. So I'm glad I'm not doing this service outside, and I'm glad you're here joining me today. So welcome. I hope you have your service booklet. Um, it looks like this and came in the mail to you. Uh, if you are not, um, if you don't have that available, you can follow us uh, in the Book of Common Prayer. We are in morning prayer right to, and we're going to start, we, we will start this with the general confession. So that uh, begins on page 79, if you happen to be using the prayer book. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against Almighty God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him together in the words of the Benite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Today's psalm is psalm number 12. And you can find that and follow with me on page 597 of the prayer book. We'll just say the psalm together. Help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. Everyone speaks falsely with his neighbor. With a smooth tongue, they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all smooth tongues and close the lips that utter proud boasts. Those who say with our tongue will we prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because the needy are oppressed and the poor cry out in misery, I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them the help they long for. The wor words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined from ore and purified seven times in the fire. O Lord, watch over us and save us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side and that which is worthless is highly prized by everyone. The first reading for today is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. It begins in the first chapter and the first verse. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan, in the wilderness, and on the plain opposite Suf, between Paran and Tafel, Laban, Azeroth and D. Zahab, by the way of Mount Seir, 
it takes 11 days to reach Kadesh Barnea from Horeb. In the 14th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the Israelites just as the Lord had commanded him to speak to them. This was after he had defeated King Sahan of the Amorites, who reigned in Kashban, and King Og of Bashan, who reigned in Ashatoa and in Edrea. Beyond the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses undertook the ex to expound this law as follows. The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Resume your journey and go into the hill country of the Amorites, as well as into the neighboring regions, the Harhaab, the hill country, the Shephelah and Negeb, and the seacoast, the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have let the land go before you in, in, in take possession of the land that I swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their descendants after them. At that time, I said to you, I am unable myself by myself to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you so that today you are as numerous as the stars in heaven. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised you. But how can I bear the heavy burden of your disputes all by myself? Choose for each of your tribes individuals who are wise, discerning, and reputable to be your leaders. You answered me. The plan you have proposed is a good one. So I took the leaders of your tribes, wise and reputable individuals, and installed them as leaders over you, commanders of thousands, commanders of hundreds, commanders of fifties, commanders of tens, and officials throughout your tribes. I charged your judges at that time, give the numbers of your community a fair hearing and judge rightly between one person and another, whether citizen or resident alien. You must not be partial in judging. Hear out the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is God's. Any case that is too hard for you, bring to me and I will hear it. So I charged you at that time with all the things that you should do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the words of the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. It's in the ninth chapter, beginning in the first verse. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. It is not as though the world of God, the word of God had failed, for not all Israelites truly belong to Israel, and not all of Abraham's children are his true descendants. But it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. For this is what the promise said. About this time, I will return and Sarah will have a son. Nor is that all. Something similar happened to Rebecca when she had conceived children by one 
husband, our ancestor, Isaac. Even before they had been born or had done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose of election might continue, not by works, but by his call. She was told, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. What then are we to say? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for the very purpose of showing my power in you, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he chooses, and he hardens the heart of whomever he chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those readings are rather difficult to hear, aren't they? They really don't sound quite pleasing to the ear. Not some of the beautiful, loving messages that we hear from the gospel, particularly the Sermon on the Mount and so on about blessed are those who are um, weak and hungry and tired. This really talks about God being the one that's in control. That's a tough pill for us to swallow. We sometimes confuse, I think, the fact that we have free will does not translate into us being in control. The present time has demonstrated that in a way like none in recent memory. In fact, in ways that uh, are somewhat unique over 100 years. But it's a reminder to us of what we heard on Sunday about the humility and the goodness and the love of the Lord, the humbleness and the contrite of heart. That's what we're called to do. We're not called to wrench our control over things. And in many cases, we make matters worse. But if we're faithful, as we heard in, in this reading from uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, that, that God has really called us to be faithful as the plan of salvation continues to work out. Very hard to do sometimes. There's a lot of times that we look at things and say, that just is not our sense of justice. And indeed, God's sense of justice is not our sense of justice. But this is where faith comes in and not a uh, feeling of how we are going to earn things through our quote unquote good works. This is when works often fails us, but faith never fails. That if we have faith that God's plan is in God's own time, God's own choosing, God's own way, that we have peace in our heart, even in times of trouble. And these are certainly times of trouble but it's something we do collectively. We need to remind one another that we can take on the yoke of the Lord as we heard on Sunday, that the yoke and the burden are light and that Christ is truly humble and good in heart. Let us have faith in that today as we continue on in our week and as we anticipate what is yet to come. Let us confess our faith in the historic words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor become overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers and intercessions today. We lift up to the Lord. We pray especially today for peace, for health, for security, for all people. We pray for the patience that we need to endure this time with coronavirus and unrest. We ask that we have a better understanding of our purpose and our what God is calling us to do. We ask that we take on that mantle of humility and grace, that we do it willingly, that we do it lovingly, and that we do it with blessing for the common good. I ask your prayers today for Jeff, Kirsten, For Michael, Susan, Elizabeth, I invite your prayers today, especially for Nance, who is entering into 24-hour-a-day hospice care. We ask that the Lord look mercifully upon her and her caregivers, her family and her friends. Pray for Julie and her ongoing recovery. Pray today, especially for Jenny, who has sadly seen a return of cancer. Her husband, Will, and their family, as they stand by her side and offer her encouragement. Pray for Ken, Helen, Joyce, Laurent, June and Robbie, Stephanie and Ryan, Joan, Tony, Jennifer, Jenna, Tom, Joyce, Michelle, Connor, Elliot, Linda, Andrew, Maida, Shirley, Joseph, Cooper, George, pray today for Florence, who passed from this life at the Zilber Hospice, the mother of John, who mourns her loss. She died on July 2nd, 
We pray for her peaceful repose, for comfort and strength for John and all who love her. Pray for Donnie, Missy, Deborah, Bill, Mo, Leah, Sally and Ed, Donna, Diane, Becky, Kate and Jerry, Betsy, David, Bonnie, Alex, Gail, Larry, Rob, Jim, Pam, Bud, Courtney, Brian, Brenda and Jeff, Nels, Kathy, Kwame, Kaya, and Khalees, Grace. We pray for the families of Bob Slater, Sue Wernicke, and Kathy Selig, all who continue in their grief journey of the loss of their beloved. May they be given strength and courage and guidance. Pray for all of those who struggle with the coronavirus. Pray especially for communities that have seen spikes in new cases. We pray that the health care workers are given the strength to continue on in their diligent work. We pray that even as these things happen and that we recognize our lack of control, that we are inspired by God's great goodness and mercy to be humble in heart, even as we take on our responsibility in slowing the spread of the virus, that we take it on willingly, that we take it on lovingly, and that we take it on with great commitment for the common good. We'll close with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. And with that, I bid you a blessed day. I bid you a blessed remainder of the week. Good courage and strength and a love of one another. Amen.